Good morning. And Happy New Year. <laughs> Today is the uh, first day of, uh, first Sunday in Advent, and uh, we also recognize that uh, we have a church year that is a little bit different than uh, our calendar year, and so today is the start of a new church year, and it begins with Advent as we um, join uh, with uh, kind of actually the Old Testament saints looking forward to the Messiah as we count down, so to speak, to the celebration of Christmas. And uh, we get to do that by uh, looking at uh, the, the Advent candle wreath that is uh, set before us. Uh, there's four Sundays in Advent, and this year the fourth Sunday in Advent is also going to be on December 24th so as we celebrate uh, four Sunday in Advent and Christmas Eve and then Monday, Christmas Day. So um, this is a, a wonderful season, a season of preparation for our Messiah. You'll probably notice that as we sing our hymns today. Um, we're going to focus on a few Advent hymns, especially this week and next week. Uh, and then as we get closer to Christmas, we'll add in a few Christmas hymns as well. But uh, this is a, a wonderful season of the church year. Uh, just a few notes. Uh, wish a warm welcome to any guests who are here among us as well. And we invite you to join us after the service for coffee and fellowship. Just a few announcements of those things that did not uh, make it into the bulletin this week. Uh, if you've seen some of the um, posters that uh, Paul Haley put together, uh, you can see them in the back for the cemetery. Uh, we also put up some signs uh, outside of the, the cemetery. You can see them out there uh, helping people find uh, grave plots that they might be looking for. That's very well done, so I encourage you to take a look here in the gathering room, but also head outside and uh, see the work that uh, Paul has been has been doing lately. So uh, please note that. Also, next Sunday, we're going to start collecting Christmas candy if you want to uh, start bringing it. And I think um, there might be a basket in the back of church or, or somewhere, um, but that was one announcement that uh, I was asked to, to make. With that being said... Uh, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our opening hymn, 331, The Advent of Our King. And we follow Divine Service Setting 4 today on page 203.
who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please turn to the intro in your bulletin, and we will speak it responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. May integrity and uprightness preserve me. For I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. We continue with the Kyrie on page 204, and please note that we will omit the glory and excelsis for Advent. <laughs> The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, As the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country, and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Then they shall dwell in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gradual. None who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. 
teach me your paths. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, glory to you, O Lord. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, he God not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again before me to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that has been in the news lately is the visit of the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, to visit with President Biden in San Francisco. One thing that I thought, thought was funny about this is that the city of San Francisco decided to clean things up a bit before the visit of a foreign president. In fact, some people are saying this is probably the cleanest that San Francisco has ever looked in its history. In fact, uh, you may know that San Francisco over the last few years has gotten to be quite dirty, quite messy. There were entire streets taken up by tent cities of the homeless. There were drug issues and in fact, there's a map of San Francisco that showed where human feces were located on the streets of the city, and it was, all, it was everywhere if you looked at that little map. And really, it should strike us as somewhat funny and sardonic that it takes a foreign leader coming to a city to make it clean up its act. But we all understand what's going on here, right? We want to put on our best image when we have guests come over. And maybe we should get more foreign leaders to visit cities like Chicago, Portland, New York City, to help encourage them to clean things up a bit, too. Really, though, a city should be well-functioning so that these things aren't a problem for the day-in, day-out people who live there, right? that people shouldn't have to worry about crime and feces and needles and all that sort of junk, rather than needing a national government coming in and saying, you better clean things up before a foreign leader comes. But this is the case in our own lives too, isn't it? We let a lot of things just go until we have special people visit our homes. Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas parties are a great excuse to clean the house and bring out new decorations and make sure things are nice and spiffy for having people over. And I'm sure many of you either have been doing this or are currently in the process of cleaning things up a bit in your homes. You see, keeping a house neat and tidy day in and day out would be ideal, but it doesn't always happen, does it? Sometimes uh, when you have to tidy up, it's just a matter of shoving everything into a closet and you know, hoping that no one sees that uh, for that for the party that's coming up. But tidying up is necessary from time to time. You see, if you never spend that time to clean, do a deep clean, to tidy up even, then things can really get out of hand, can't they? You might have seen TV shows about people called hoarders who never throw anything away. And in fact, uh, this is not just the normal busyness of a family, but this is, we're talking about mountains and mountains of boxes and books. And you have a little path that you have to weave through the house just to get to the dining room or the bedroom or wherever you need to go. Not cleaning things up worsens your quality of life. It makes things dark. It maybe even provides a breeding, a place of breeding for mold and other sorts of nasty stuff. And I think you can see that too on a citywide basis with someone like somewhere like San Francisco, right? It's not good to have a city overrun with that sort of filth. In fact, we need to get the homeless some of the mental health care that they need. But today, the season of Advent is a similar call from God to clean things up before his son comes. Advent is a season of repentance that is equivalent to Lent. Lent is looking forward to Easter, to the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Advent is a season of looking forward to Christmas, a time of repentance where we Consider, are we ready to welcome our Lord on Christmas Day? 
And it doesn't sound like at first glance, like our gospel reading for today fits with what you might consider a Christmas reading or an Advent reading to be. Why are we hearing about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the back of a colt now in December? Shouldn't we be looking forward to that on Palm Sunday in March as we look forward to Holy Week and Easter? But it does fit here and now. In fact, Jesus has come to help clean things up a bit. And that's part of what we're hearing in the triumphal entry of Jesus. But I also want to focus on two important decisions that Jesus has made to clean things up. And we're going to actually start with the second one, with his decision to enter Jerusalem. This was a huge decision. It was important. You see, Jesus' enemies couldn't really get to him while he was up north in Galilee. But if he entered Jerusalem and spent an extensive amount of time in Jerusalem, then they had time to plot to arrest him and put him on trial for blasphemy and for treason. Jesus knew this. And so he doesn't sneak into Jerusalem. He doesn't come in and out on a, a quiet sort of manner. But he boldly goes in and claims that title of the Son of God of the Messiah, of his people, the Jews. And so people respond, right? They love welcoming a king into their midst. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's a lot of joy to this decision of Jesus to enter Jerusalem. And Jesus would spend the next few days of Holy Week preaching in the the temple, In fact, he also cleansed the temple. He drove out all the money changers, drove out the the animals and all of that that had cluttered his temple. He said, this is to be a house of prayer, not a den of robbers. In a way, he came to clean house. The Jews and the Jewish leaders would not do this themselves. They wanted the money from the money changers. They wanted that position of authority and power they had over their people. And so they rejected Jesus as their Messiah, but he would be their king nonetheless. He would demonstrate that by going to the cross and saving them and doing another sort of cleaning house by taking care of sin, death, and the devil. He wore a crown of thorns as a king and wore a purple robe. And yes, he died on the cross to protect his own people from their enemies. That was the second major decision that Jesus made, his step, if you will, towards the cross. But there was a first step that Jesus also made intentionally to help clean things up. And that is also what Advent is all about. Jesus stepping forth from his heavenly hall to be born, to be conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary, be born of her, and live just like you, only without sin. In fact, I like how Savior of the Nations come. The fourth stanza puts it. Then stepped forth the Lord of all from his pure and kingly hall. God of God, yet fully man, his heroic course began. And here's the question. Were there people who were prepared and ready, who had their houses clean and everything just in the right spot for the coming of Jesus, for him to enter their lives? And the answer, of course, is yes. And this is a beautiful thing to read in Luke 1, We're going to look at this actually in the next few Sundays. But Zechariah was ready. He was a priest serving in the temple. He had his wife, Elizabeth. And God came to him and said that they would have a child. Mary herself was ready that when the angel Gabriel came to her and said that she would bear a son, a son of God, she welcomed it. Simeon and Anna in the temple They were there praising God and waiting to finally see the redemption of Israel in the baby Jesus. This Advent, 
it's also time for you and me to prepare our hearts to receive the Messiah. He came once in humility. In fact, he was humbly born and placed in a manger, not in a, a palace with a fancy crib, but he relates in many ways to you and me. He lived a very humble life, not one of power and privilege, but in humility. He wandered through Galilee and Judea, teaching and encouraging the common folk to believe in him as their Messiah. As Jesus came in humility once, he comes to us now in grace. Jesus comes to you through the preaching, the reading, and the, uh, the proclamation of God's word. He comes to you on your lips as you receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, refreshing your souls, and feeding you with himself. What you receive today is far greater than any foreign leader. It is even greater than if President Biden were to, were to come to our church and sit in our midst today. What you receive today is the coming of your king, your savior. He brings with him all the heavenly hosts. We worship with more than what you see in front of you today. We worship with all the angels and archangels and indeed all those who have gone before us into heaven. Jesus brings with him all the gifts that he won for you on the cross. Forgiveness, life, salvation, joy, peace, love, all of that he brings for you now in the season of Advent and, yes, in the season of Christmas and, indeed, every Sunday. The season of Advent is a season of repentance, but it is also a season of joy. In fact, that's why we have the pink candle. It is a pink in symbolizing joy. We're going to hear that as we get closer to that day of joy. But you can also see this sense of joy in the people who welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem. There's just a bubbly happiness as the children go before Jesus, as they shout their hosannas and welcome him as their king. And understanding that our king comes to us today will remind us of his special coming on Christmas. And Advent is a time to prepare our hearts as well. In fact, it is one thing to clean up a city and to make it look just right. It's another thing to cl uh, clean up the clutter of a house. But perhaps on this day we can also ask, what clutter do you have in your hearts that might be worth addressing as you prepare to welcome your king? Is it persistent thoughts of uh, 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 sins that you might have, of thoughts, words, and deeds that you have committed that you feel ashamed about? Could it be a persistent grief or problems or injuries or injustices of the world? Could it be a love that has grown cold between spouses or children? God has come to encourage you to address these problems in your life. And perhaps Advent, as the season of Lent as well, can be a good time to do this. And perhaps it is our epistle reading for today that can give us some encouragements. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. That the relations between every Christian is one of love, as we have first been loved by God, so we love one another. Also, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. This encourages us in our fight against sin, to not dwell in the darkness of sin, but to rejoice in the light that Christ brings to us, to our minds, to our bodies, to everything that we are. And so fight all these sins and darkness with the word of God. Maybe you can add more devotions to your life during the season of Advent. Pray that the Holy Spirit helps you in these struggles in your life, this cleaning up as you prepare for Christmas. Talk with people you've been avoiding. Talk with about subjects that you've been avoiding. Mend those fences by the strength of God. And in a way, just like houses, this special cleaning is good to do from time to time. 
as we prepare for something special like Christmas, but it's also good to do on a regular and daily basis, isn't it? And that is why we come to church week after week as we get healing for our souls, as we get strength to address the problems that we see in our own lives. But in a way, Advent highlights for us what happens every Sunday, that your king comes to you to help you clean up your sin by forgiving it, by giving you joy where there is grief, and by healing you from all your infirmities, and, and to deliver to you the salvation that he won for you on the cross. He stepped forth twice to do that for you, once to be born, and once to die, and rise again. So thanks be to God for this gift, and may our hearts be cleaned and be always full of Christ as he dwells in us. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand now and continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. To you, O Lord, we lift up our souls, and in you we put our trust. Do not let us be ashamed of our hope, but come quickly. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit, that we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with your whole church, Lord, that as we wait for the coming of Christ our King, our hearts may be filled with his joy and our lips with his praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces, taking them under your care and blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit us in your compassion, O Lord. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their affliction, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. Especially grant... Connie, Judy, Kinley, Bill, Robert, Gailene, Shirley, Deborah, Kathy, Patty, Dorothy, and Jeffrey. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred up by the word and sacraments to rejoice anew, now and at his second advent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you declared that the days were coming when you would accomplish our salvation. And in your time, you caused your son, the righteous branch, to spring up for David. By your grace, keep us joined as branches to Christ, that we might bear fruit until the day he returns in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now sing him 805 as the offertory, as the offerings are brought forward. <laughs> service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty 
almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.